Is your Bible lying to you? Well, hello, James. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Help me, Jesus. Help, help me, Jesus. In the hit TV series Monk, one of my all-time favorites, world-class detective Adrian Monk was also a world-class germaphobe. He was always catching really bad criminals and always using wipes to keep him from catching anything else. One very devious criminal nearly took out the defective detective by poisoning him. His diabolical plan used Mr. Monk's trusty wipes against him by placing the poison in the wipes. But, as usual, the criminal's tactic was discovered and Mr. Monk was saved from certain death. Every day, millions of people are being poisoned by one of the things they trust the most in life, their Bible. They're telling them things about God that just are not true. God's words have been distorted. God created everything, including all human languages, and he's used these languages to communicate to us through the scriptures, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. He created these languages before he used them in the scriptures. He created these languages pure, gave them to man, and mankind has corrupted them. So God had to do something with the words that man was already using, whether it was Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek. Psalm 12, 6 from the concordant version of the Old Testament. The words of Yahweh are clean words, silver refined in a kiln, fine gold purified seven times. God had to take a language that already existed, whether it was Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek, that had been corrupted by man, and he had to purify it to be suitable for his scriptures so he could clearly communicate himself to us. We don't have the original manuscripts where God's words were purely communicated to us through the hands of human authors that he inspired. We have copies, we have translations, we have many versions that come from God's original words and original thoughts. And believe it or not, God knew exactly which words to use to communicate to us. He's quite intelligent. So when translators go from Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek into English or another language, oftentimes it is very difficult. And oftentimes those pure words of God that he has refined as gold and silver get muddy down and watered down because of tradition, translator bias, translator ignorance. There's so many reasons why God's words, his pure words, get diluted and muddied into being no longer God's words. In actuality, his truth is turned into a lie by many translators and translations. Because of all the corruption in language and communication, the Apostle Paul gave Timothy this tremendous advice. It's not only advice, it's a command. And this advice is very helpful to us today as we try to communicate with each other and as we try to communicate God's truths to the world that Jesus saved. In 2 Timothy 1.13, Paul says, have a pattern of sound words, which you hear from me in faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. He tells us to have a pattern of sound words because God, in his communications to us, had and has a pattern of sound words. By comparing the concordant versions and the King James versions, you'll see that it is possible to consistently translate the original languages of the scriptures into English. And when you have a proper and good translation, you not only have a new, different, and better Bible, you'll have a new God, a different God, not a God that eternally torments people, not a God who annihilates people and leaves them dead forever. You'll have the truth of God who sent his son to be the savior of the world. And he actually did it. He saved the world. Our first comparison between the King James Version and the Concordant Version, we will look at the Hebrew Sheol and the Greek Hades. Now Sheol in the Old Testament corresponds to Hades in the New Testament. They're basically synonyms. They're speaking about the same thing in different languages, Hebrew and Greek. The basic definition of Sheol is to ask, which is what we do when someone dies. Where did they go? They're gone. And in the Greek, we see the word Hades, which means unseen. When someone dies, obviously their body is still there, but they are gone. The definition of Sheol and Hades gives us the idea of where all souls go. So this is where all souls go upon death. And death, we have to understand, is a return. The body returns to the earth, the spirit returns to God, and the soul returns to the unseen. Remember, we talked about having a pattern of sound words. The King James Version fails miserably at having a pattern of sound words. And that is one indication of a better Bible translation, is do they have a pattern of sound words in the translation? 
In the King James Version, we have Sheol. It is translated 30 times as grave, 31 times as hell, and 3 times as pit. And in the King James New Testament, we have Hades translated as hell 10 times, and as the grave 1 time. Part of the problem and the reason that I believe the King James translated Sheol as grave and as hell almost equal amounts is that they try to separate the bad people going to hell and the good people going to the grave. But that's not at all what happens. The scripture says that all souls go to Sheol upon death. The scriptures even say that Jesus went to Sheol, aka Hades, when he died. Was he a bad person? But the King James says that he went to hell when he died. They try to support their teaching of hell through these mistranslations of Sheol and Hades. And in addition, I think it's important to note while we're speaking about hell, the King James Version also translates Gehenna and Tartaru as hell 12 times total. So we have Sheol being translated as hell, we have Hades being translated as hell, we have Gehenna being translated as hell, and we have Tartaru being translated as hell. That's four different words translated into hell. Sheol and Hades are similar. They are basically synonyms for one another from two different languages. But then you have Gehenna, which is a different place, and you have Tartaru, which is a different place. So you have one, two, three distinct and different places translated in the King James as hell. That is definitely not a pattern of sound words. If we go on and look at the concordant version of the Old Testament and the concordant literal New Testament, they translate Sheol as unseen, and in the New Testament they translate Hades as unseen. Throughout the Old and New Testament, the concordant versions are consistent in using one word, unseen, to translate Sheol and Hades. That is a pattern of sound words. Now I want to do one more word comparison and translation comparison between the King James Version and the Concordant Version. What we're going to see here is another instance in the King James Version of not having a pattern of sound words and the Concordant Version having a pattern of sound words. So let's take a look at Aeon and Aeonios in these two versions. First, let's look at Aeon in the King James Version and Concordant Literal New Testament. It is a Greek noun, Aeon. It occurs about 125 times depending upon the manuscript that you're using because not all manuscripts are the same. There have been errors here and there uh, through copying. So let's look at the King James Version and how it translates the Greek noun Aeon. It translates it seven different ways. So we've got this one word translated seven different ways. Now God used it, purified it for his purposes, and now it's being corrupted seven different ways. It's translated as ages two times, course, eternal, and there are several variations of ever. We have forever, forever and ever, ever, and we have evermore, never, which is basically ion used with other words denoting the negative. We also have it translated as world. The King James translates Ion as world 37 times, but being consistent with them not having a pattern of sound words, they also translated cosmos as world 140 times. So when you're reading through your King James Bible and you come across the word world, you don't know if it's Ion or cosmos unless you use other tools to dig a little deeper into the Greek. You can do those online or there's printed versions of concordances. And we can see that these words used by the King James Version, some of them have very contradictory meanings. Ages means uh, periods of times with beginnings and end. Eternal, based on the word eternity, has no beginning and no end. So you have two drastically different words, ages and eternal, used for the same word, ion. It's not that the King James Version is using similar words to translate this Greek word. They're using drastically different words that are just sending a false message to those who are reading. And I will say this, I've come across a lot of King James only readers. I don't think a lot of them dig into the Greek based on some of the comments I've seen that they're going to read the King James version because they believe that is God's only true word for mankind. They're not going to look any deeper. They trust that the King James is telling them the truth. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you're a King James only, you're not digging into the Greek, you're not looking for deeper understanding of God's words to us, then you are being lied to and poisoned by your faithless King James Version. So the Greek noun ion 
In the concordant literal New Testament is translated one way as eon or eons if it's in the plural. And just to note while we're looking at this, ion in over half of its instances is in the plural form. So ion cannot be eternity, which a lot of people based on their theology, aeon would have to mean eternity. So again, we see the concordant literal New Testament using one word to translate one Greek word, and that's a pattern of sound words. Now let's quickly look at the adjective form of aeon. We've got aeonios in the King James and the Concordant Literal New Testament. The Greek adjective aeonios occurs about 70 times in the New Testament. The King James Version translates it as eternal, forever, everlasting, and world. So it translates the noun and the adjective as world, and it translates aeonios as eternal, which would mean if you're a thinking person that ion the noun would mean eternity but it does not translate that as eternity forever and everlasting could be considered very close they use everlasting in regard to punishment and destruction in the new testament things that are eternal have no beginning and no end and only god is eternal having no beginning and no end. So again, they're using contradictory words. Everlasting could have a beginning, but no end. Forever could have a beginning, but no end. Eternal has no beginning and no end. So again, we see the inconsistencies, a pattern of unsound words, and Eonios in the concordant literal New Testament is translated one way as Eonian. Again, God purified the words to be used in his scriptures. He chose one word, Eonios, and it only makes sense to use one word to translate it, Eonian. I want to be fair in my treatment of this, so you need to understand that the concordant literal New Testament is not perfectly consistent in doing one word in English for one word in the Greek. That was the goal when they set out to make this translation, but there are some areas where they failed to do this. Now, the words that they, where they will use multiple words, they're very close in meaning, unlike the King James, which has vastly different and contradictory meanings in some of their translations. But you're not gonna find a perfect word-for-word -word translation that's consistent across the board. At least I have not found one. I don't know of anyone who has ever promoted one that's a perfect, consistent word-for-word -word translation across the board. So you're not going to find a perfect translation. We don't even have perfect manuscripts that we're making these translations from. The only perfect words that were ever given were the words that God gave directly to the authors of his scriptures. And we don't have those anymore. So things get lost and corrupted and changed over time. But we should try to hold the best version that we can find in our hands. If we discover that the version that we are using is not good, it is inconsistent, it is lying to us, and even possibly poisoning us spiritually, which will affect us physically, we need to take those bad versions. We can hold on to them for reference. I still have my King James Bible that I used for several years, but I don't put my faith in that. I put my faith in the concordant version, and even in that, my faith is loose because I have to go back to the Greek and the Hebrew consistently so I can be assured that what I am reading are God's words. And there are some translations in the concordant version that I don't like, but it is the best version that's available today in the English language. I'm going to show you how you can access the concordant literal New Testament and the concordant version of the Old Testament online through concordant.org. To access the concordant literal New Testament online, go to concordant.org to version read Concordant New Testament online, and there you have all the books in the New Testament. To access the Concordant version of the Old Testament online, go to Free Media, click on Digital Publications, scroll down until you see Concordant version of the Old Testament 2015 edition, click on that, and there you have the Concordant version of the Old Testament with links to each book and the chapters within the book. So if you wanted to go to Exodus 15, just click on Exodus 15 and there you are. The concordant versions at your fingertips online. And from the home page on concordant.org, you can scroll down to the print versions of the concordant literal New Testament and the concordant version of the Old Testament. If you buy the New Testament, 
I would suggest getting the hardbound because it has the Greek English keyword concordance and about 380 extra pages of information. Most of that is the concordance in the back of the book, but there's some very helpful information in this regarding the Greek, understanding figures of speech. So it's a very helpful Bible. Uh, not only is it an accurate translation, but it's very helpful in understanding the Greek. If this video has benefited you, I kindly ask you to poke that like button. And I promise I will not tell your pastor or your pastor's wife. And to continue to grow in these big truths of God, that he is the Savior of all mankind, through the work of his Son, through his death and resurrection, I invite you to watch this video here.